Hello everyone, this is Tyler with Diesel Laptops again, and I want to specifically talk about fault codes. So, we are already hooked up to an engine here, and this is actually one that's on our bench, the test one that we've been using. And this is a Cummins engine, and we don't have a sensor hooked up to it, it's just the ECU sitting right here on the bench. So, I want to talk about the codes. So, first of all, in Texa, you will see a bunch of symbols over here on the right hand side. And depending on which one you click on, you'll get a bunch of different icons down here on the lower right. So on this one, we only have that question mark. This one down here gives us a question mark and the wiring for it. Uh, this one down here will give us three of them. So depending on what the code is, you'll get a variety of options. So let's just talk about these very quickly. So first of all, the orange question mark, this one right here, will always be in here. This is a new feature that just got added to the Texas system. And what it's going to be is the ability for you to get repair information from Texa, which will also include you being to get talk to somebody or email somebody at Texa for support on those codes. So if I go on here right now and I hit this orange button, you're going to get a message that says user not subscribed. And that's because the button's in here, but there's nothing to subscribe to yet. So for now, there's just a button that does absolutely nothing. Uh, we get a lot of questions about it, but that's what it is. Now this button over here on the right, the one that has the bubble around it, if I click on that one, that one will give us a little bit of information on the code. The other thing that this particular one has here is some pinpoint wiring diagram. So that's the symbol right here, and we'll go ahead and click on that button, and it's going to load us up uh, a wiring diagram request. It's asking what ECU you have. We'll just select one at random so you can see what it is. And as it pulls up here, You'll see it pulls up a picture of the ECU, and it pulls up the wiring for it, telling you where it is and where it's going to. So when you click on it, uh, you will actually see on some of them a variety of different options that come up. The manual mode is for the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is a new tool that Texa has coming out that integrates with the whole package. It's awaiting FCC approval, so they can't actually release or sell it here yet. Uh, but that is what will be coming down the down the line. Obviously, you also get a description of what it is, and it tells you a location on the truck where it's located. So we'll hit the back button out of here to get out of this. Uh, the other thing with codes. So that's great. Um, it gives you a little bit of information. If you double-click a code, it's going to give you a couple things. It is going to give you the actual error code, which is the OEM flash code. And that is the important part. You always want to have a flash code available in order to properly troubleshoot. And then it also gives you the PID and the FMI. PID and FMIs are things you're almost always going to be able to get out of an ECU. Uh, even with like a generic reader, they're really no good unless you have the flash code, which Texa is obviously providing us. So we'll hit the confirm button to get out of there. And again, I'll just click on another one of them. Um, let's do an EGR valve position circuit. I click on that, I get an actual error code, the PID, and the FMI. So that's great. I am getting all my codes, but now the question is, is how do I fix them? And with Cummins, we actually have a couple different options on this particular laptop kit that you purchased. So let's go load up DTC Solutions. We talked about this in one of our first videos. We just kind of told you what it was. Now you're actually going to see it. So DTC Solutions is our solution to giving you quick and dirty repair information for every major transmission, ABS, engine system that's out there. We're constantly updating it. We actually have some new products coming out soon. We'll allow you to look this all up from your smartphone or from a website as well. So for right now, let's go into here. And let's go in here and let's go find our Cummins engine. So obviously we have Allison, Bendix, Cat, Cummins, Detroit, Mac, Bobo. Um, and I'll just scroll through it once real quick so people can see what's in here. Uh, we recently added pack car engines to it as well. Uh, he knows coming to it soon. So we're, we're constantly adding to this thing. It's a great quick and dirty lookup. Uh, in our case, I know I have a Cummins ISX. And it was it's this one right here, ISS Signature 2003-2006. Um, How do we know it's that one? If I hop back into the Texa here for a minute, let me get off that screen. If I go over here to ECU Info, it's telling me that it's a signature ISX. It's also giving me the manufacturing date. So I have a vague idea of which one it is to pick out of the out of the system. Uh, so let's go back to faults and let's go pull our fault code back up so we can all remember what it was. 2272 is the code we're looking for. And let's go back into here. And right now by default, everything is sorted by fault code. 
So let's go down to 2272 and find it in the list and see what it says. Uh, well, we shot it there just a tad. 2272. So we get our exact same description as before. Uh, we get a little information on what that code is and what's going on with it. We get some possible causes. And if we scroll down here a little bit, it'll tell us what the possible repairs are. So this is a nice, quick and easy, dirty way to get in there and just see what's going on to get a real quick information. And you may say, that's great, but what I really need is I need some pinpoint wiring diagrams. So I'm going to hit the little button in the lower right here to show the desktop. And I'm going to go over here to the manuals folder on the desktop. Let's pull that open and let's go over to Cummins. So Cummins, when you open it, you see this one that says all Cummins troubleshooting. I'm going to open that one up. And when this opens here, for those of you that are familiar with Cummins Insight, you will know, you will recognize these documents immediately uh, because it's the exact same thing that is in the Cummins Insight software. So I'm scrolling all the way down through here to get to the signature, I believe it's under signature, signature ISX. We'll do fault systems. Then we will do diagnostic methods, and we're going to do the one that says troubleshoot fault codes. So all these codes that are listed here, 1132, 33, 34, they're all the exact same codes, and this is the exact same diagrams that you would find in your Cummins Insight software. So uh, you know what? And I picked the completely wrong manual because this is not where 2272 is. So let's just go through here and close this tree back up. And we'll go over here to the comment signature ISX CM870 and see if this is the one. Yeah, here we go. We're in the right area now. So 2272 right there. EGR valve position circuit. And this is where you're going to be finding the step-by-step -step repair information. We have a wiring diagram in there. We can go down. And it says refer to troubleshooting fault code. We go ahead and click on it. And this is going to give us our step-by-step -step troubleshooting guide for the Cummins. So just follow the trees down, and they will click you through to the right area where you need to go to figure out what it is. So again, there's your pinpoint troubleshooting for the Cummins. So we're not going to go through in the video here and go through every single folder because it would take us quite a while. But needless to say, there is a ton of information in here. Uh, the first time you have a code... What I would do is go in here and go see what's in there. And again, what we do is a little bit different than the average person that may sell you a diagnostic tool. We have our own tech department here, and we want to help you with stuff. We want to know when there's problems or there's issues or whatever it may be. So if you have a code, you can't find the troubleshooting for it, you need more help, please call us. That's what we're here for. Uh, it's part of the service that we offer to you, the customer. All right, so I'll hit the confirm button. Um, and again, I just to go back, the red triangle means they're active codes. And it'll also say ATT when they're active because we do have some, some people that are colorblind that use the software, obviously. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom here, I believe I have some, yeah. So we have some active codes. So the, the inactive codes, I should say. So yellow triangle is inactive and they'll say MEM. And the green ones are means it was an active code or inactive code, but has now been cleared. So the way we'd clear all these codes is two ways. One, you can hit the erase button, which is right here. Or you can go over to activations, and there will always be one that says error memory clearing. So you can clear codes one of those two ways. All right. Otherwise, that briefly covers how to properly troubleshoot a code. Uh, the thing you always need to know, double click your code, get your code number, go to DTC Solutions and find it. And if you need more information, go to the manuals folder. If you need more than that, give us a call. Uh, we're here to help. There are some other services out there that do sell uh, you know, basically step-by-step -step repair information for every single code. Uh, be more than happy to talk to customers that are interested in that product as well. But for most customers, this is enough for them to get by or get in the ballpark of what you need to do to fix things. So again, thank you for watching our video, and we look forward to hearing more from you.